It's now been three months since Apple released their brand new M4 iPad Pro and the hype is finally starting to die down and they're probably starting to become available in your area. So now you're probably asking yourself that big question. Should you be upgrading from the M2 iPad Pro to the M4 iPad Pro? Or maybe you've been thinking about jumping into Apple's iPad category for a long time, but you haven't had the chance yet. And now you're thinking to yourself, hey, should I buy a brand new M4 iPad Pro fully priced out? It did just come out. It's probably the best iPad. Or should I buy a used or maybe on sale M2 iPad Pro? Well, in this video, I'm gonna explain to you all of the major differences, the differences that actually matter not like the M4 iPad Pro is Apple's thinnest product ever, even though that is kind of cool. I don't really care when it comes to the operation of my iPad. And you'll also know exactly which iPad is the one that you should be buying for your needs. Now, first off, let's start with the physical and exterior changes on these two iPads, because even though they might look really similar on the surface, there's a lot of changes going on here. So there used to be this ultra wide 10 megapixel camera on the M2 iPad Pro that Apple has actually opted to remove on the M4 iPad Pro, just leaving the 12 megapixel main camera. Now I'm going to say this on behalf of everybody in the world. If you're somebody that uses their iPad to take photos as their main camera, please stop. This is one of those few instances where I actually agree with Apple removing a component or a feature from their iPads because I'm pretty sure nobody ever used that ultra wide camera ever. Now the removal of that ultra wide camera has actually allowed Apple to add a larger flash module. Now they claim that this makes it easier to scan documents, giving you a better, higher quality document whenever you're scanning. Now I'm not somebody who does this often, but if you are somebody who does scan documents pretty often with your iPad and maybe you're thinking of upgrading or you don't have one at all, maybe that's something for you to consider. You will definitely scan and take higher quality document stills with the M4 iPad Pro with that better flash module. The front facing camera module has also changed location. So on the M2 iPad Pro, the older one, it used to be up here. And now on the M4 iPad Pro, it's in the landscape position right here, where I actually think it should have been all along. All right, so I'm filming this video on the M2 iPad Pro and because the camera is in the corner on the top of the iPad, if you're looking at it from a portrait perspective, I'm looking right at the camera and even though I am, this looks really awkward. It looks like I'm looking to the side and not paying attention and that can get really annoying if you're using this for meetings. And now I'm recording on the M4 iPad Pro and now look, I'm central, I'm looking right at you and it looks like I'm communicating with my audience directly how things should be and this is really where the camera module should have been all along. I'm not looking to the corner and it doesn't look awkward and it looks a lot more natural. The image quality should be pretty similar between the two though because they are using the same sensor, but with the M4 chip, there might be a little bit more processing, a little bit smarter things going on in there, making the image look better. Personally, they look similar. Maybe the M4 iPad Pro looks a little bit better, but the fact that the camera's in the middle and that it looks more natural is everything to me with this. Now, arguably the biggest upgrade on the M4 iPad Pro has to be the screen. They finally brought OLED technology to the M4 iPad Pro, and it literally doesn't matter what size you get, you're gonna get that OLED tech. Whereas the old 11 inch M2 iPad Pro obviously doesn't have that. And for me, this is the number one reason that I switched to the M4 iPad Pro. Now, traditionally, OLED screens are not as bright. So what Apple has done here is they've created a tandem OLED screen, basically stacking two OLEDs on top of each other, allowing them to achieve a higher peak brightness. So instead of 500 nits, this thing can actually go all the way up to a thousand nits of brightness, whereas the old M2 iPad Pro, I believe, is locked at 500 nits. So the new screen is significantly brighter. The blacks are way inkier. The color reproduction is just way better. Everything you would expect with an OLED panel, you finally get on the M4 iPad Pro. Now I watch a lot of content at night, I'll be honest, in the dark, and the screen has stood out so much better. Everything just looks a lot better. I get in trouble all the time for having my screen at max brightness, but trust me, you're gonna want it at max brightness on this. I also edit a lot of photos in Photoshop and Lightroom and edit videos on DaVinci Resolve on the M4 iPad Pro and the screen just looks absolutely fantastic. 
the experience is way better. Now let's move on to the Apple Pencil Pro, which Apple also released alongside the M4 iPad Pro. Now the only reason I bring up this pencil along with the new changes is that if you actually have an older Apple Pencil and you upgrade to the M4 iPad Pro, it's not gonna work. So this is a second generation Apple Pencil and the reason it's not gonna work is that they had to change the charging magnetic mechanism inside of the iPad and where it's located because they changed that camera module positioning to the landscape version. So if I try to stick this on, it's just gonna fall and it's not gonna work and now it's out of reach. But here's the Apple Pencil Pro and it should go on no problem. So yeah, if you're gonna buy the M4 iPad Pro and you're a heavy pencil user, that's something for you to consider. You are gonna have to buy a new Apple Pencil Pro Thankfully, it does cause the exact same as the older one. Thankfully, there are some benefits of buying the Apple Pencil Pro. So thanks to the haptic engine inside, you're now able to actually click or squeeze the pencil, which has a built-in command. So by default, it brings up your tool palette and you're able to quickly change between your various tools, which I think is super handy. Also, there's this nice reflection that you get when you hover, and you're also able to finally perform barrel rolls, very similar to a real brush or highlighter or whatever tool you're using. It's now a lot more accurate compared to real paper and pencil experiences. So if you're an artist, you're really gonna appreciate that. And also on top of that, you might not have known, but the older Apple Pencil actually had a 54 millisecond latency delay when you were drawing. This one has a five millisecond latency delay, which is a massive improvement over the last one, obviously. So if you're an artist or a heavy pencil user, you're definitely gonna appreciate the upgrades and the experience of using the pencil on the M4 iPad Pro is significantly improved. Now, speaking of buying new things, you're also gonna have to buy a new Magic Keyboard. So this is an older generation Magic Keyboard and this is the M4 iPad Pro and the magnets inside it are different. Um, so no matter how hard I try, it's not gonna stick and I'm not gonna let it drop like the Apple Pencil, obviously. So yeah, you're gonna need a new Magic Keyboard and this is that. This is the brand new Magic Keyboard that goes with the M4 iPad Pro. And as you would expect, it fits on perfectly. Now, I know it sucks having to buy a new keyboard, but hear me out, I think this is totally worth it and the Magic Keyboard was due for a refresh. First off, the trackpad is a lot bigger, which is awesome because if you have large hands, that small dinky trackpad on the old Magic Keyboard was really hard to operate. It's also made of aluminum, so it's a lot sturdier. There's a better, newer hinge, so you're able to push the screen back a lot further, which is just way more comfortable and I wasn't able to do that on the old one and that really bothered me. Everything is also pushed back in general, so the screen is a little bit further away from you when you're typing, similar to a laptop. But most importantly, Apple finally gave us that function row key at the top, similar to a MacBook. So you're able to adjust your volume or your brightness. And it's been really annoying not having those keys when using the Magic Keyboard for the iPad, because you have to swipe down on Control Center and fix your brightness and your volume and you have to take your hands off the keyboard, and in general, it just disrupts the experience. So yeah, like I said, it sucks having to buy a new one, but this Magic Keyboard is significantly improved compared to the last one. All right, now I quickly wanna interrupt the video to talk about today's sponsor, and that is Artlist. So if you've been here for a while, you know that Artlist is a long-standing sponsor of this channel, and that's because I truly believe in the product that they sell. I really wish that Artlist was a service that was around when I first started my YouTube journey, because they make making YouTube videos like this so much easier. You can access an unlimited library of stock footage, licensed free music, and sound effects to help you make better videos. And now, most recently, they actually added this incredible feature, which is their AI voiceover feature. And I swear to God, this feature is magic. So if you're someone who's not comfortable speaking on camera, and maybe you wanna create an AI-generated voice of your script and put that behind one of your videos using stock footage, you can totally do that now, and it's on additional costs. It's included in your Artlist membership, which is just absolutely incredible. And all you have to do is go to their library of amazing AI voices, you simply pick one, you type in whatever script you want that voice to say, you hit generate, and within seconds, and literally, I mean seconds, it's really, really fast, you get a full audio file that you can download of that generated script in an incredibly realistic AI voice. I swear you would never even know that it was generated using AI. So if you're interested in snagging these features for yourself to help you make better videos, there is a link in the description below that will save you two months if you sign up for Artlist. 
Once again, huge shout out to Artlist for sponsoring today's video. And finally, we have what some would consider the biggest upgrade and you can't see it and that's because it's inside the iPad. This is Apple's only device right now that's running the M4 chip. They just skipped M3 altogether. Now, all you really need to know is that the one terabyte and two terabyte versions have two more cores than the M2. So the M2 had eight and the one terabyte and two terabyte versions of the M4 iPad Pro have 10 cores. Now an advancement in chips and speed and performance is always great, but what I will say is that I used to edit 8K footage from my Canon R5C and 4K footage from my DJI Mavic 3 Pro directly from SSDs onto my M2 iPad Pro and I have a whole video on that on my workflow and I never noticed any issues. So while the performance change is welcome, I don't think most people or regular people will really notice the improvement in the chip's performance until we get an app or some kind of codec or something that can really push it. So for now, even though the chip improvement is great and I'm really happy to be having an M4 iPad Pro and the only M4 product of its kind, it's not really something that I want to highlight as a major change, which is why I left it for the end. Okay, so with all those changes out of the way, finally comes the answer to the question, which iPad Pro should you get if you don't have either? And if you already have the M2 iPad Pro, should you upgrade to the M4 iPad Pro? And I think the answer to that question really depends. If you're somebody who watches a ton of content, and I mean a ton, you're always on the screen, maybe you scan a lot of documents, or especially if you're an artist, I think you should definitely upgrade to the M4 iPad Pro. The screen and the Pencil Pro alone, forgetting the M4 chip for a second, are massive improvements and they're gonna significantly improve your entire experience when using your iPad. Now, if you already have an M2 iPad Pro and let's say you use it occasionally or maybe you gave it to your kid or your partner or you bought a bunch of these for your business where your client interacts with them for like maybe 30 seconds to fill out a survey or something, no, I don't think you need to go out and replace all of your M2 iPad Pros with the M4 iPad Pro. Now, let's say finally that you don't have an iPad Pro at all and you've been thinking about jumping into this ecosystem for a while. Now, I know this one just came out and it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but I do think that the M4 iPad iPad Pro is the one that you should pick up. Yes, it has a better screen. Yes, it has a better chip, but I think the main reason you should go with this one over the M2 is the accessories. The Apple Pencil Pro and the Magic Keyboard that just came out work with the M4 iPad Pro. They do not work with the older generation iPads. And the newer iPads that come out, I assume at least for a few generations, will continue to work with those accessories. So you really future-proof yourself by continuing to use the Apple Pencil Pro and the new Magic Keyboard that came out. And overall, I do think that the M4 iPad Pro for the screen alone, which is just such a joy to watch content on, is worth the upgrade. So yeah, that's my comparison of the M4 iPad Pro and the M2 iPad Pro. Hopefully that answered all your questions and now you're ready to make a decision on which iPad you should purchase. But anyways, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. And until then, keep creating.